Uh, today is Tuesday, September the 20th. That's right. It's Tuesday, September the 20th. This is our evening meeting here. At, that's right, it doesn't, but it is. It's September the 20th. This is our evening meeting. Uh, we're on the brink of the transition from summer to fall. So we're here at 901 Main Street in the heart of Old Town Conyers. We're calling our meeting to order. Today will be myself and Commissioner Washington. Uh, Commissioner Williams is away today, and it'll be myself and Commissioner Washington. I uh, also want to take this opportunity to say to those that may want to speak during public comment, if you would, go ahead and get your red comment card, and if you have it already, and get, get it completed, and we'll make sure we give you an opportunity to do that at that time. So I'm calling the meeting to order um, special recognitions we or have presentations. We tonight. going to be smooth. None tonight. No, no, none All right. tonight. All right. Well, that means we're going right into agenda review. That is correct. All right. So, Mr. Chairman, we'll start with item 2022-402. This will be a combined item. It is actually the transmittal resolution for the capital improvements element for the 2022 annual update. There will be a brief public hearing next Tuesday during our board meeting at 10 a.m. to go over this, this item in depth with our consultant, and we will open the floor for comment then and move on to the resolution. Okay. All right, Can, very good. Could you briefly explain to everybody what a the capital improvement um, is? A lot of people may not Sure. Know so it. annually, the capital improvements element plan has to be submitted to the Department of Community Affairs through the planning department. That the capital improvement fee is a fee that we impose upon development in the county and that percentage of the development fee goes to fund <laughs> things like libraries and parks and mm -hmm. fire trucks and uh, things of that nature and every year has to be looked at and updated and submitted and so that plan is currently out on our website for review there'll be a brief public hearing tuesday and then it'll be submitted to the department of community affairs through the atlanta regional commission thank you and thank you commissioner washington for asking for that clarification because in our whole new spirit of making sure that we teach inform and educate we want to make sure people do understand when they hear all these different acronyms and the, the, these mm. terms they may not know all of what this stuff means and sometimes it can be a little bit confusing so thank you commissioner washington for that and thank you director relish let's go to our next item please okay so tonight i'll start reading through the items and if there's a question i'll i'll stop chief k will probably prompt me because okay. this is a five-page uh, agenda all right so um that or water so Okay, item 403 is with the Atlanta Regional Commission through the Parks and Recreation Department, the Senior Services Division for the Consolidated Appropriations Act grant for home delivered meals. This is change order number one to contract 2021-176. There's no change in funds. This is for a three month extension through September 30th, 2022. Item 405 is with the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council through the Superior Court, the Accountability Courts. This is a grant to assist with housing for individuals who suffer with mental illness and or substance abuse disorder relating to legal involvement in the amount of $30,000. The term was June 1st, 2022 through September 30th, 2023, and this is submitted for ratification. Item 406 is with Marchman Consulting for the Superior Court through the Accountability Courts to provide a variety of services for multiple grants for program operations and evaluation services. This is change order number two to contract 2021-113 to add additional duties and responsibilities for mental health and public safety grants. This is at no additional cost through September 30th, 2023, and this is a grant funded expenditure. Do we know how much the grant is for? Dr. Lewis. Thank you. I do not know how much the CJCCC grant is in totality, but I can find that out and give that to get you. And this is in, in addition to the consulting fee that we have with Commissioner, uh, it, it's actually a, it, it's grant funded, but it's through other funds that have been uh, received by the county in the past. 
essentially this uh, change order basically changes the duties of the person that is uh, performing the task. Okay, thank yeah. you. We good? All okay. right, next item, please. Okay, thank you. Item 407 is with Viewpoint Health through the Superior Court. This is for the behavioral health services for the courts. It's a unit price. The term is October 1st, 2022 through September 30th, 2023, and this is a grant funded expenditure. Item 408 is with Southeastern Psychological Associates Incorporated. This is to the Superior Court for the Behavioral Health Services for the, for the Courts. This is a unit price. The term is October 1st, 2022 through September 30th, 2023. This is a grant funded expenditure. Item 409 is with the Truancy Intervention Project of Georgia through the Juvenile Court. This is for Truancy Intervention Project Grant in the amount of $5,000. Item 410 is with Walter Nunnally through the Juvenile Court and Accountability Courts for a certified peer specialist providing peer support services for the Accountability Courts program at $20 per hour. This is for one year with option to renew two additional 12-month periods, and this is a grant-funded expenditure. Item 411 is with Paula Boyd through the Juvenile Court Accountability Courts for the peer specialist providing peer support services for the accountability courts program in the amount of $20 per hour. This is for one year with option to renew two additional 12 month periods. This is a grant funded expenditure. Item 412 is with Aaron Natalie Askew for the accountability courts. This is for peer support specialists. This is change order number one, a contract 2021-70. This is to increase the hourly rate to 15, from $15 per hour to $20 per hour. This is to renew the contract term September 30th, 2023, and this is a grant funded expenditure. Item 413 is with Hydrocall LLC through the Water Resources Department for the water treatment plant. This is for purchase, delivery, and installation of chlorine analyzer in the amount of $18,936 and it, the, service, the service time is two to three days. Item 414 is with Hydrocall LLC for the Water Resources Department for the Water Treatment Plant. This is for the purchase, delivery, and installation of particle counters. It's in the amount of $47,320 and it's two to three days as well. Item 413 is with Inliner Solutions LLC through the Water Resources Department. This is for the annual Sanitary Sewer Rehabilitation Services, contract number, contract number one to contract 2021-167. This is for a name change and a price increase in the amount of $4,359.97. The renew term is through October 25th, 2023. Item 416 is with Inliner Solutions LLC through the Water Resources Department. This is for the annual sanitary sewer rehabilitation services. This is contract number two to contract 20 change. I'm sorry, this is con contract change order number two to contract 2021-167. This is for additional funds in the amount of $3 million due to aging infrastructure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. Right. Me. Director Pete. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I think that at $3 million, somebody might, it might behoove us for someone to explain exactly what the $3 million is going from. Is it coming right. from the general fund? Is this a, was this a budgeted item? All of those things so that mm -hmm. people- Okay, would, first of all, good evening. Good evening, <laughs> good evening uh, director. Okay, $3 million uh, pretty much is for the um, sewer rehab program that we have. Uh, recently, we have the SSES program, the Sanitary Sewer Evaluation Survey Program. Mm -hmm. What this program is doing is uh, actually going out, televising our sanitary sewer system, performing CCTV inspections, um, smoke testing, trying to figure out problems with the system, inf inflow and infiltration. Uh, this $3 million is needed because as we go out and we do these inspections, we find more problems with the system. Once we find more problems with the system, we have to repair the system. The reason we need to repair the system is to prevent sanitary sewer overflows and sanitary sewer spills. Mm -hmm. So is, is this outside of what was budgeted in the 2022 budget? 
or is it is was it a budgeted this was part of the uh, capital improvement program so we just pretty much moving monies from the capital uh, to go ahead and you know add monies to this particular item to be okay. able to take care of these issues we have in the field okay that's until I think of something else okay well, I, I think it's interesting, and I think it's a good interesting that uh, both Commissioner Washington and I both kind of perked up uh, yes. that price point of well, $3 million. Uh, uh, but I, I do appreciate Director Peake, who is our Director, director of Water Resources, um, was able to educate us and explain to us that this investment is an investment to prevent bigger things from happening. Absolutely. Because if we don't do this type of maintenance and, and the... He talked about the smoke test. He talked about the CCC t TV, which is a, a telescopic unit that goes in and they're able to look at the monitor and see what's happening with our infrastructure inside of the system. If we don't do these periodic tests as we move forward, we could ultimately have a major problem. Uh, when I was doing a deep dive on a Zoom call the other day about what's happening over in uh, Jackson, Mississippi. Um, for so many years, they've ignored, ignored, ignored. So the issue, if you've heard some of the news reports, this issue, the problem that they're experiencing didn't just happen. Um, they've been receiving reports and they've ignored it for time and time again. We have to make the investment. It's a sizable amount of money. And I, I, I to totally agree with the inquiry from the commissioner right. because I was going to say something too. Right. But we appreciate the fact that we have to slow it down and teach, explain, uh, and educate all of our citizens as to why we're spending this kind of money. Right. And I, I also appreciate your other part of your answer about, hey, this was part of the allocation for capital funding. That's right. But guess what? We had to go ahead and make a move on this right. so that we can be preventive and make sure that nothing happens. We've got an aging infrastructure here in Rockdale County. Let me just get that out clearly. Uh, we don't have a brand new system here. Uh, that water and sewer system out there and the plant has been there for many, many years. You can't have something you can't buy something or build something in the 80s and the 90s and expect that it's going to last forever. We've got to maintain it and make sure it stays in place and that it's functional. And then at some point, guess what we have to do? We've got to build a new one. Build a new one. It's just like buying a, a new car. The That's car right. you bought in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, it may be still running, but it may not be able to get you as far as the car you need to go now. So you, got, you may hold on to that for <laughs> sentimental reasons. But you got to go ahead and purchase another one because you got a little bit for more traveling down the road to get to. So this is a good, this is a good thing, and I appreciate the attention to detail from our water resources. But I really appreciate, Commissioner, your inquiry because this level of education. I'm going to be talking about that all the time because I think we have to. We're obligated to make sure the citizens of the county can understand where these dollars are being spent. That's important. So, uh, don't sit down because okay. the next one is All a right. half a million dollars, and I'm sure the inquiring minds are going to want to know about that. Okay. So we'll follow protocol with Director Rulich, and then we'll come back to you, okay. D Director Peake, as you're standing tall. Okay. There. Mr. Yes, Mr. Chairman, if I may, before Director Rutledge goes for the, uh, just for clarity, to answer an additional question that Commissioner Washington had, this is funded through the Enterprise Fund, so it's not the general fund. Oh. Uh, if you want to confirm. Correct. Uh, I know you've had meetings with Director Lewis. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Very good clarification. Thank you, Chief. All right. Next Thank item, Thank you. Please. All right. Item 417 is with RDJE Incorporated through the Water Resources Department. This is for the Fieldstone Pump Station elimination in the amount of $499,254.25. And the amount of time is 150 days from notice to proceed. Okay. So you had a Did question, wanna, Commissioner? Um, yes. Okay, you, you uh -huh. want to okay. go ahead and give us what you... Okay, um, pretty much this is the... Uh, okay, I had the Fieldstone Pump Station elimination. Right, I had, to, I had to catch you back up on, uh, look back on my form again. But pretty much um, we, we have a project going on out there, Selim Road Street Widening Project. It's happening out there. So we're going to eliminate this pump station. What kind of, what's happening out there? Say it again clearly. Uh, Salem Road Street Widening. Salem project. Road Street, Street Widening. widening project. Yes, sir. That so way actually, they can hear what you're saying. We, we, act, we actually widening, widening the roadway. Yes, sir. So we have to move our sanitary sewer infrastructure. 
uh, in the process of moving this infrastructure, we're going to um, eliminate the pump station and we're going to have, we're going to install a gravity flow sewer system. Mm -hmm. But what kind of sewer? Gravity flow sewer system. Gravity flow. Well, natural so flow. A, a natural flow <laughs> sewer system. Uh, right now that sewer is being pumped um, um, to its location. We're going to install a gravity flow system where it moves it's by gravity. Is that the latest and greatest technology in sewer? Or? No, 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 ma'am. Um, no. Most of sewer system is gravity flow. Uh, some systems are uh, force main pump systems, and the purpose of that is if it if it doesn't have a fall and an appropriate fall that it needs to be able to push its way out, it's being forced out through a pumping system. So this gravity flow is better than. Or well, well, gravity to? gravity flow is. Well, you, we, we can say gravity flow is better because you don't have a pump. You know, you don't have to maintain that pump. Uh, gravity flow is just pushed out naturally, uh, you know, through gravity. So it is a better system. It and, is a better and, system. And, and, and a good question, <laughs> Commissioner Washington. Yeah. Uh, in this particular instance, okay. only because I know about this pump at okay. Fieldstone, okay. this would have been a good graphic to put up on the screen okay. because people need to see how old, how they wouldn't believe that we still have a pump like okay. this in Rockdale. Kind of see some heads shaking back there because I know Charlotte is very familiar with this pump. If you get a chance to ride out with Director Peak out on uh, uh, Salem Road going towards South Park where Fieldstone is, he'll take you to this pump okay. and it'll blow your mind. I, I wish you had a picture to show this one because... Can you okay. have a picture on Tuesday? Uh, you, a picture, we'll, we'll definitely absolutely. provide a picture. You, you, you a get a picture station. of that. Absolutely. And, I, and I, think, I don't think you should just start with a picture of this one. Okay. Uh, I think it's important oh. to, 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 to tell the story. Okay. Okay. Right. We'll Let's tell the story. Right. And I'm going absolutely. to that up, Chairman. It is, old, it, it is old pump station. <laughs> There's a story to be told. Right. So let's tell the story. And I, I think it's going to blow, it's gonna blow a lot of people's mind when they see what we've been operating with for quite some That's time. Right. Absolutely. And and I'm going to step out there because I'm not an engineer, but I will okay. tell you, based upon what we have and what the director is talking about, gravity flow in this particular instance is it's a whole lot system. better. <laughs> okay. Thank Absolutely. you for that, Chairman. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Next item, please. All right. Item 418 is with Computer Software you, Incorpor okay. Incorporated okay. through the Water Resources Department. This is for the Software Services Agreement. This is contract change order number five to contract 2020-30 to add additional module for the magnet software customer portal and inspections module upgrade. And this is an additional $13,500. Item 419 is with the Department of Natural Resources to the General Services Department. This is for the acceptance of land and water conservation fund grant for the DeCastro Trailhead Nature Center and Pavilion and the resolution approval in the amount of $125,000 through December 31st, 2024. Do you want to talk about exactly what that is, where it is? Uh, yes, you could inquire about that, absolutely. So, that so Director Rulledge, I know you have a lot of back knowledge on this one, but I think, Commissioner, it's you want to pose your Director inquiry? Sanders could take this one, yeah. yes, thanks. Okay. Unless we want a history lesson of the DeCastro property. Um, Only the old timers. Right. <laughs> hey, now. Good evening. <laughs> um, this is a contract to accept a grant with um, Department of Natural Resources in uh, conjunction with Parks and Recreation uh, for a facility out at the De Castro Trailhead. This one has Director, been, would you lean toward the sorry. mic so that <laughs> our audience can hear you? Uh, they're, they're straining to hear. They can't. This yeah. has been um, in the works for quite some time. The grant had been stalled, and now we've been given the go-ahead to proceed. So it was 125000 in grant and a match from SPLOST for 125000 It's on the approved SPLOST list, and um, the property was actually donated from the, the, the Castro family mm -hmm. for this um, use as a nature center and pavilion. And there'll be displays, a restroom, and it's located about halfway between South Rockdale Park and the De Castro Trailhead. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? And Commissioner, you're familiar with this location. Yes. All right. You just wanted to make sure people understood it. Okay. I got you. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, Director. Thank you so much. All right, very good. All right, thank you. Item 420 is a with a floor creation LLC through the General Services Department for floor covering for various county locations. It's a unit price contract for two years with option to renew two additional one year periods. So I wanna make sure that um, when we do something like a two year period, it wouldn't have anything to do with <laughs> other projects like the courthouse, like we would be able to still bid out 
flooring for the courthouse or something like that once we That's correct. So this is for um, unit prices for when we're doing small renovations, the courthouse would be bid out as a full project. So we okay. wouldn't bid out flooring and drywall separately. Okay, makes sense. Yes. Thank you. Very good. Okay, thank you. Item 421 is with Motorola Solutions to the General Services Department. This is for equipment for the new 911 Communications Center in the amount of $2,505,992.49. This is for one year, and this is a SPLAS funded expenditure. Item 422 is with Beatty Construction LLC through the General Services Department. This is for small contract work, framing, drywall, and ACT work. This is one of three recommended awardees for on-call unit price. This is for one year with option to renew two additional one-year periods. Item 423 is with Jerry J. Johnson and Associates Incorporated through the General Services Department. This is for small contract work, framing, drywall, and ACT work. This is the two of three recommended awardees for the on-call unit price for one year with option to renew two additional one-year periods. And the other vendor is Laz and Associates LLC, also through the General Services Department. And this is the third of the recommended awardees. Okay. Item 425 is with United Signs LLC through the General Services Department. This is for monument signs for various county locations. This is a unit price contract. The current signs needed in the amount of $40,732. This is for one year with option to renew two additional 12 month periods. So I'm gonna, uh, thank you director. I wanna okay. jump in there. I'm gonna ask uh, Director Sanders to just kind of explain to us when we talk about monument signs for various counties locations, give us an idea of what these types of signs we're talking about. Um, the, the signs look like the right out front here. Um, they look like a monument. Like the one in front of the assembly, the assembly hall, hall and the and auditorium. auditorium. That's yes. a monument sign. Yes, it's a monument okay. sign. And they're in front of the fire stations, each new facility. Um, we obtain a sign. The one in front of the elections building will actually have a marquee, which is why that's different, so that they can actually announce um, dates and um, put those things on there. So this is just um, this one is for two signs, but we have the ability with this bid to actually add signs as we build fire stations and other facilities. Okay. All right. Very that's good. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Item 426 is with American Facilities, American Facilities Services Incorporated through the General Services Department. This is for general janitorial and custodial, custodial services at various county locations. This is a unit price contract. It's change order number one to contract 2020-91 to add JP Carr Community Center as an additional site. This is for five days per week at an additional $1,100 per month. Item 427 is with ArborServe, ArborServe Incorporated through the General Services Department. This is for the grinding of bulk piles of trees and yard debris. This is an on-call unit price contract, one year with option to renew two additional one-year periods. Item 428 is with Burgess Events and Amusements through the Talent Management Department. This is for the Employee Appreciation and Benefits Fair. The cost is covered with wellness funds by Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. The term of the day was September 17, 2022, and this is wellness funds. Item 429 is with Snyder Geo Geospatial LLC doing business as Q Public for the Board of Assessors Office. This is change order number two to the First Amendment to contract 2014-157. This is to add an update to provide document access report module and a property tax dollars module. Year one is in the amount of $336 for November 2022 and December 2022. And year two is in the amount of $2,016 for January 2023 through December 2023 is for one year with annual renewals. Item 430 is with the Tax Management Associates Incorporated through the Board of Assessors Office. This is for personal property tax audit. 
It's fees based on the accounts. The term is one year with option to renew four additional one year periods. Item 431 is through the Georgia Department of Transportation through the RDOT department. This is for the right of way acknowledgement forms for Honey Creek Road at Snapping, Sh at Snapping Shoals Creek. And this is submitted for ratification. Item 432 is with CHA Consulting through the Transportation Department for the Farmer Road at Lakeview Estates Roadway Design. This is change order number six to contract 2018-186 to add additional design services. The additional cost is $23,400 and this is SPLOS funded. Mm -hmm. Item 433 is with AHEAD Incorporated through the Technology Services Department for security software platform in the amount of $180,000. $60,000 will be due in 2022 and this is for two years. Item 434 is with Blue Alley Technology Service Technology Solutions LLC through the Technology Services Department. This is for the backup storage for data protection and retention in the amount of $226,249.18 and this is for 60 months. This is host funded. Item 435 is with Wolpert Incorporated doing business as Data Cloud Solutions for technology services. This is for the Camera Cloud software solution and implementation for the Board of Assessors in the amount of $36,458.34. The term is December 31st, 2028, then it automatically renews unless terminated. This is also host funded. Item 436 is with Kanji Incorporated through the Technology Services Department. This is for the mobile device management software in the amount of $14,391. The subscription is for one year and auto renews the bills annually unless terminated. Thank you, Director. I want to just pause for a moment. I'm going to ask that Director Moore Jackson make her way to the podium. And Director Moore Jackson is our Technology Services Director. Uh, we've had a, a several items on the agenda uh, this evening, Director Mo Jackson. I just want you to give us a very brief overview of what's happening now in your department as relate for all of these items to be on the agenda. Some of these impact the tax commissioner, tax assessors, other departments, as well as your infrastructure and what you're doing. Talk to us about, educate us about what's happening with technology services and why it's so important that we put these provisions in place. Thank you, Chairman, and good evening, good Commissioner. Evening. For the items that we have listed here, for example, the uh, item agenda item number 433 that's listed as Veronis as AHEAD Incorporated, basically this particular software application assisted technology service department in establishing an all-in-one cybersecurity platform where we will use it to help protect our active directory, and basically that's all of the accounts within the um, network for all of the employees working within Rockdale County and all of our network shares and then our Microsoft 365 accounts also. And this will also assist us in classifying our data such as sensitive data. Mm -hmm. And then it also will show us when there is a risk, what, where the risk is in the network. Okay. If there's over a thousand end users in the network, if there's a risk, it saves us time if there's a software application that actually says it's on this particular device, this endpoint, and it points us straight to us in order for us to expedite, expedite the remedy in order to fix whatever the, gotcha. um, the threat to the network Otherwise, is for just one Otherwise, we stand the risk of it spreading and contaminating Correct. other systems. Gotcha. Because if the longer it takes us to identify which system is infected, it can spread right. from system to system. Okay. And if we're steadily looking for it, then before long, the entire network is infected. And then another one, uh, the next one, for example, is uh, Blue Ally, and that kind of goes 434 and 435 um, kind of go together. Okay. Because 435 is actually the, um, the data cloud solutions the, through the Board of Assessors. This CamaCloud software solution will actually enable the mobile assessments on the tablets for the field appraisers. Okay. And working with them and, and also a couple of other capital improvement projects that 
are in the process of being approved by the Board of Commissioners, that takes us to item 434, the reason why it's needed. Basically, 434 is giving additional backup storage space on the network. In order to run certain programs, the network has to have the storage space for the programs to run okay. and also for the employees work throughout the county to actually be backed up to the to Makes the sense. network. Makes sense. And the last item there, item number 436, our mobile device management software. The county probably has around 400 cell phones. This software en enables the technology services department to do a more efficient job of tracking all of these mobile devices. And that's just the cell phones that doesn't make ref that doesn't um, include that number does not include all of the iPads and all the other mobile devices that are moving throughout the county. This phones. helps us to tighten up the um, inventory in order to enable the county to be better stewards of the taxpayers' dollars. Much more efficient. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Director Moore Jackson, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to continue to be doing this periodically as we move forward. I think just having our directors here, uh, it adds value when they can explain what's happening teach, educate, and inform us as to what's going on and how we're spending taxpayers' dollars. And people can really understand, again, all of these acronyms and all of these phrases, they're oblivious to the average person, particularly the lay people. They don't know. But when you break it down, when you slow down and you teach and explain, we're going to be in this mode as we move through the rest of this year. And we're excited about some of the uh, activities and programs we have outline for 2023 to exclusively zoom in on informing and educating our citizenry about how tax dollars are spent, but more importantly, how the government operates. Absolutely. Next item, please. All right. Thank you. Item 437 is with Ross and Associates to the Planning and Development Department. This is for the 2022 annual capital improvement element update for the for FY 2022 in the amount of $5,124 and it's for six months is what we had discussed earlier about the public hearing and the resolution. Absolutely. Item 438 is with Aramark Correctional Services LLC through the Sheriff's Office. This is for the food service at the jail. It's contract number five, contract change order number five to contract 2017-112. This is a unit price at two month increase to extend the term through September 1st. I mean, I'm sorry, through to extend the term two months, which would be September 1st, 2022 through October 31st, 2022. Okay. Item 439 is with ACCG, Local Government Risk Management Services. This is for the Rockdale County EMA Department. For the 2022 Employee Safety Grant to be used to purchase six AEDs, cabinets, and signage for the county offices in the amount of $9,972. This is a single year grant award and is submitted for ratification. Thank you so much. Director Morgan, if you would just come shed a little light on that and the importance of these AEDs throughout county facilities. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this is a great grant that is offered through our insurance liability provider, the AC. A, a, it's a, a tongue C twister, C isn't it? Yes. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> ACCG. Okay. Um, and it is the employee safety grant, which is up to $10,000. And you can see we spend almost every penny of it. We get uh, six AEDs. Uh, we get to choose the subject matter of our grant. This is the second year we have bought six AEDs, and every year we're just increasing our footprint of having providing safety for cardiac events of the people who visit our facilities and our employees in our county facilities, and having an AED on site that you can get to somebody within the first two to four minutes of an event greatly improves the cardiac output of that event. So um, it's just having more safety features readily at our fingertips, we're also increasing the amount of CPR training we're giving our, our employees to be able to use these devices. So it's part of a long-term project to try to have one in as many places as we can. Absolutely. Does this building have one? Yes, this, one, this building has three. Okay. One on every floor. Where, the, where they're located. What about this meeting room? Does it have one? That's where it's the on the talk. second floor next to the elevator. It's, it's actually in the elevator beside the elevator doors, first, second, and third floor, okay. so people know where they are. Okay, well, let me just say that's a little concerning because if somebody's having a heart attack in here and somebody's got to run all the way down there to yeah. get there, 
I, I know what well, this just would say this would be the day that Chief Mack and Chief Webb was not here. I think we need to have one in this assembly hall. Uh, you, you say that again, Commissioner. I have you. You have one? Yes. Um, you know, I have a fire person who does training in my house, and oh. she has trained me oh. on how to give CPR. Thank okay. You. I got well, you. so here's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, I'm, if, let's consider putting one in the um, assembly hall, somewhere either in the foyer out there or somewhere in this part of the space. Uh, where we have general public and people show up, you know, uh, if we have an incident in this room, this meeting room, we don't have to move count and run and, and count on Commissioner Washington and all the people she's talking about, or if Chief Mack or Chief Webb are not here, or if you're not here, uh, you know, so I, I, let's just, you've got six that are coming, six more that are coming. You've got some creative places to put them. You're trying to saturate the county facilities. Let's consider 901 Main Street. We can we can do that. We can rotate that, and I can save one of those other locations for next year. All right. All right. Very good. Very good. All right. Thank you. Next item, please. All right. Item 440 <laughs> is a requisition through the Water Resources Department for SE diving services, for diving services, in the amount of $67,721.42, and this is submitted for ratification. And Director Rolich, I was going to ask when Director Morgan was yes. up, take a moment and tell us who ACCG is. What does that stand for? It stands for the Association County Commissions of Georgia. And what do they really do? They represent all 159 counties in the state of Georgia, whether it's um, insurance or policy advocacy, legislation, um, education, uh, for there's so many things that county commissioners and their staff need to be aware of, and they are our, our advocate and our educator. Outstanding. Next item, please. All right. Item 441 is a requisition through the Water Resources Department for Salem Water Solutions USA for the repair of the large pump at the old Salem pump station in the amount of $28,941.42. You see why I wanted that picture, Director Peake? Uh, she said for the repair of the large pump at the old Salem pump station. So when you bring in, as the commissioner has requested, when you bring in a series of photos all around the county, uh, you, you bring, bring them in, because I think it's important that people see what we're relying on, okay? Next item, please. Item 442 is a requisition through the Water Resources Department for CIRM, Corporate Environmental Risk Management for the Staff Augmentation Support for 2022. This is change order number one for development inspections in the amount of $450,000. Mm -hmm. Item 443 is a requisite. She just kind of grunted. Okay, she didn't say anything, she's just kind of grunted up here. She didn't say anything, so okay, we're gonna well, just I go, pa we're gonna go so past no, that grunt okay. and keep it going. Yes, next item, no, please. All right, all right. Grunts don't count, you this gotta one, speak up. The next one is, <laughs> is an even bigger grunt. <laughs> Well, you gonna speak up or go out? Well, we gonna speak up. Yeah. <laughs> right. Next item. Okay, please. item 443 <laughs> is a requisition through the Water Resources Department for CIRM Corporate Environmental Risk Management for staff augmentation support for 2022. It's change order number one for sewer rehabilitation, the amount of eight hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So we might as well do both of them. Okay. Okay. Uh, Director Pete, Water Resources. Okay, we'll back up. Uh, this particular item is uh, pretty much still part of the sewer rehab that we talked about earlier. Uh, CIRM is assisting. Right now, CIRM has uh, assisted us with inspectors. We have inspectors, we have engineers. Uh, and the purpose of these inspectors and engineers, we need somebody to look over the work that's being done in the field from our vendors that's doing the sewer rehab for us. So we have engineers to go out. They look over. They they they, they watch this work that's being performed uh, by the vendors. Uh, they also assist with the smoke testing, um, doing the SSES on the system. So that is the purpose of uh, of us having CERM, you know, to assist with this uh, particular project. So this is part rehab. of that spirit of commission. You've heard us talk about inspect what you expect mm -hmm. and to have enough staff available available to be able to go out into the field and make sure that all the vendors that we've contracted with they're doing the work that we need them do, to do the correct way on behalf of Rockdale County 
we got somebody to check the checker and make sure. It kind of reminds me of that episode of Good Times when they were inside the retail department and the guy had to be checking balance. Somebody was watching the checker who was checking the checker. That's what this is. Absolutely. And it costs for all of that. So you got to have some check and balance. You have to inspect what you expect. And in order to have a good inspector, you got to pay for it. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right. So well, not only that, when we when we um, first of all, I know CERM and I know that they are an excellent company. Um, but when we when we um, contract out like this, it saves us money because we don't have to have them on our insurance. We don't have to pay right. all the benefits, and we get the the uh, ability to know. We know the company of some and the quality that they have. So Absolutely. It's, it's like a two for. We're saving on benefits and things like that, but we're also getting the, the, um, the benefit of having a company like CERN that is doing the work. So okay. I get okay. it. All right. All right. All right. Thank you, Director. Thank right. you, Commissioner. Next item, please. Okay. Item 444 is a requisition through the Water Resources Department for McNaughton, McKay. Electric Company upgrading the CP15 filter building at the water treatment plant in the amount of $73,792.07. Item 445 is, with the is a requisition for the Water Resources Department through Woolpert. This is a fee for flow monitoring for 17 locations and five tasks within the Snapping Shoals Basin for a three month duration in the amount of $97,300. Item 446 is a requisition through the Stormwater Management Department for IPR Southeast LLC. This is for the trenchless rehabilitation process to replace the compromised damaged pipe via the use of liquid liner in the amount of $600,000. Item 447 is a requisition through the Stormwater Management Department for Golder and Associates for post-construction monitoring and engineering services for the Lakefield Dam re rehabilitation in the amount of $22,000. Item 448 is a requisition through the Parks and Recreation Department through the Senior Services Division for Claris Healthcare for the Claris Companion Products in the amount of $28,494. This is an ARPA-funded expenditure. Can we, can we have a Director explanation? Uh, Redmond, come on up, sir. Tell us a little bit about this when this is covered under ARPA fund, but give us a little understanding of it. Good evening. How are you guys doing? Good evening. This, oh, um, happy birthday. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> this uh, this um, item was for the Claire's Companion Product Requisition, and this is support the technology project that is being used with the senior services. It was started with CARES funding and is being continued with senior services, the ARPA assisted program. And the purpose is to provide the tools and accessibility to seniors so that uh, those who are at risk for isolation and or loneliness have a, an, a, an item, a technology item that will help kind of ease that discomfort for them a little bit. So again, it's opera funded. And so what kind of Act. technology item? It is a, it's, it's somewhat of an iPad, but it's an easier mm -hmm. tool to navigate. It's not as complicated and you got to flip up, it's more buttons. It's, Okay. It's more uh, user friendly for the uh, senior community. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. So, is that the reason why I'm starting to see Miss Jenkins on Facebook more often? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That could be why. Okay. She okay. has access to that too. <laughs> <laughs> she's been liking a lot of stuff, so I knew something had happened. She's she's got technology inclined. <laughs> Go, Miss Jenkins. Okay. Next item, please. Item 449 is a requisition through the Sheriff's Office for the Instrument House. This is for AED Zoll Plus with carry case for new vehicles in the amount of $21,922.04. This is SPLAS funded. Item 450 is a requisition through the Sheriff's Office for Motorola Solutions. This is for dash mount mobile radios with accessories in the amount of $19,046.96. This is SPLAS funded. Item 451 is a requisition through the Sheriff's Office for Wade Ford. This is for four 2023 Ford and Scepter Pursuit vehicles in the amount of $181,277. This is SPLAS funded. 
Item 452 is a requisition through the Sheriff's Office for Wade Ford for four 2023 Ford Echo Boost Pursuit vehicles in the amount of $194,400, and this is SPLAS funded. Okay. Item 453 is a requisition through the Sheriff's Office for Hardy Chevrolet. This is for six 2023 Chevy Tahoe vehicles in the amount of $246,468. This is SPLAS funded. Are these, are we starting the, the um, procedure where we're rolling off vehicles? Would, would these be in that, you know what I'm talking about? Now? Well, come on up, Director. In the meantime, what I was just going to say, um, <laughs> just keep in mind that the SPLOS fund, the SPLOS allocation that comes through from public safety from the SPLOS committee, uh, awards, uh, fire 911 and the sheriff's office a certain amount of funds to be able to uh, take care of some of the expenditures director sanders can probably explain it a lot better these are actually off of state contract they are not um, the fleet replacement plan has not been approved by the board as of yet but the sheriff's office is not included in the first phase of that because their vehicles have specialized equipment Okay. So the vehicles that we're looking at are like your basic um, passenger vehicles that are going around town. So they are not included, but um, we could look at it down the road. But this is actually state contract with SPLOS funds. Oh, thank okay. you. All right. Item 454 is a requisition through the Sheriff's Office for Axon Enterprises. This is for the Axon camera system in the amount of $28,327. And this is SPLOS funded. Item 455 is a requisition through the General Services Department for Russ Bassett for HGAC by contract for the new 911 Center Dispatch Console Furniture in the amount of $233,603.60. This is SPLOS funded. Item 456 is a requisition through the General Services Department for Parsons Roofing. This is roof repair at Johnson Park Old Gym and at Johnson Park Office. In the amount of $166,024.66, this is submitted for ratification. I'll call Director Repnett up to come explain to us what happened to that roof mm. over at Johnson Park. Thank you, sir. So about, I think, two months ago, we had a storm to come through. And um, some kind of way, as the wind blew, it grabbed the edge of the building and almost like peeled it like a can. It ripped the roof all the way off, so as it rained overnight, the water seeped all the way into the gymnasium and um, damaged the gym floor uh, very bad, but we have to replace the floor. So uh, the roof has to be replaced. It also damaged the area that sits over the, aqua the uh, natatorium as well. So rainwater got inside the building in those two areas. What is the age of the old gym, the gym that we're talking about? You have any idea, maybe it between you and Director Sanders? 98. 94. Yeah, yeah and that's 90, the original roof on that Okay. Yes, so it lasted that long, okay. I think past his lifespan, yes. Okay, Mother Nature came through and was a little upset that night. She was. Okay, all right, okay. Well, that explains it. That explains it, okay, and very good. Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, this, sir. Th this uh, expense was covered through our insurance claim. That, yes, that's correct. an insurance claim. That's correct, and, and, and I thank you, Chief, for pointing that out because um, with our insurance policy, these kind of things, you know, can't control Mother Nature. No. Absolutely. Very good. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank All right. you. Next item, please. Item 457 is a requisition through the General Services Department for Southeastern Services and Equipment. This is for the new floor at Johnson Park Old Gym due to the, to the severe weather event just mm -hmm. described <laughs> in the amount of $184,334 $184, and also submitted for ratification. Okay. Item 458 is a requisition through the General Services Department for Pratt Recycling. This is for the solid waste haul and tonnage charges add and add an additional $120,000. Item 459 is, is a requisition through the General Services Department for Imperial Dade. This is for additional janitorial supplies for Rockto County in the amount of $14,800. Item 460 is a requisition through Transportation Department for BM&K for the CEI services for Sigmund Road Phase 2 widening and the multi-use trail from east of Lester Road to Irwin Bridge Road construction project in the amount of $91,796.71. This is SPLOS funded. 
Item 461 is an expenditure request for Quicket Solutions through the Technology Services Department. This is the annual subscription software for code enforcement and the court system in the amount of $55,630. Item 462 is an expenditure request through ACCG and IRMA. This is through the Finance Department for the Property and Liability Insurance Renewal Premium in the amount of $986,597, and this is submitted for ratification. So, Director Lewis, take a moment and explain to, uh, explain to us item 462, please. Good evening, Chair. Good evening. Good evening. Um, so we just had the two items from the park services that was reimbursement for our property, reimbursement for damages to our property. That's correct. And this is actually payment for our property and liability insurance through ACCG. Through ACCG, we're able to pool together resources throughout uh, all of Georgia in order to get a more efficient pricing on our property and liability insurance. So the market term is they bundle. We're part of a bundle, and we get a lower price. That is correct. All right, very good. Thank you. All right, thank you, Director. Next item, please. All right, item 463 is an expenditure request through the DeKalb County Revenue and License Administration for the Water Resources Department for sewage treatment for June 2022 in the amount of $84,636.09. So, uh, uh, once again, I want to call Director Peek on up here because I want to exp you to explain this relationship between Rockdale and DeKalb and talk about uh, over the, the uh, Mall Parkway and Iris Drive and this whole connection here that drives all the way through and while we're in this agreement with the DeKalb County. County. Yes, okay, sir. currently, uh, I'm sorry, cur currently uh, Rockdale do have an agreement with DeKalb County uh, sewer department and this agreement allows us to be able to send sewage to their treatment facility. Uh, some parts of town here in Rockdale County we don't have a sewer system or we don't have a treatment facility. Um, due to us not having a treatment facility this sewage has to be treated so we enter an agreement with the Cab County to be able to send flows to their treatment facility. Do we know how long the agreement is for? I don't know how long the uh, agreement is for. Uh, now, uh, and, and if I may, Commissioner, the agreement the agreement typically is a two year term, and uh, we are currently in the middle of that agreement, and it's paid monthly based on the amount um, of um, so so is that flows to the cap cap. Yeah. Yeah. And we, yeah, that, right. And, and, I mean, we yeah. might as well. We're going to have pictures of pump now, stations. We might as well get all in this. Now, you could have said that in a different way, Director. I mean, right. just count the way that you the, said the, the that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. well, well, let's slow down because I okay. think it's important to know that this agreement has been in place for quite some time. Yes. And we're yes. talking about particularly the portion of Rockdale County there at Sigmund Road and I-20, the Abbott Ridge area, that area, the Mall Parkway, Iris Drive area, particularly that particular area, which also includes Covington Highway as well. That goes into DeKalb County. Uh, there's no polished up way, Commissioner, to talk about sewage amount and, 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 and the flow, right. but we don't have the necessary... Um, uh, mechanical equipment in place to be able to carry it. They do, and they're right there on our county line, and it allows us to be able to do that. And we have to pay for it. Right. Uh, that's nothing unusual right. because uh, that happens with counties and municipalities all across the place where we enter into IGAs or memorandum of understanding where we have to support each other with these different. Because Rockdale, we're not called Rockdale for nothing because we have a lot of rock. Some places we can't even run any type of sewer because. You can't get through there, and we have to enter into these types Agreed. of agreements. Is that somewhat on point, Director Pete? That's right. Okay. A absolutely. Well, I just want, right. want people <laughs> to, to see how much that actually costs, because if you're looking at uh, one month in July, it was almost $90,000 for that month, and then June was another $85,000. If you multiply that out by 12, that's a lot of money. That's coming. Is this coming from the enterprise fund or the general fund? It's coming from the enterprise fund. Okay, we, but people still need to see right. that you know this is part of their water and sewer bill. We got to pay for we have to pay these for kinds of services. So I want you know the whole point of this is so that people can start seeing where their money Absolutely. is going. Why we have to have absolutely. Um, 
we have to have money to be able to pay the cab counter because we don't want to keep this uh, well, well, uh, balance. Not, right. Not just that we don't want to keep it. Honestly, we can't keep it. Right. And if we did have a place to put this, we'd have a standing room full of people because there'd be a backup. Right. right. And, and that kind of backup is what yes. folks don't want in Rock Their County. Wow. So, so I think it's important that as we have entered into agreement with the cab, as with other counties on different items, that we continue, continue to keep those type of agreements because we need them on right. this and they need us on oh, other things. And I, that's, that's all a part of having those relationships. But to the commissioner's point, there's a cost involved. Right. And, and people need to understand she was just breaking it down by a monthly cost. But think about all of the people that live in Rockdale County on that side of the county. Split between I-20, between Covington Highway and Iris Drive and Mall Parkway. That whole Turner Hill, uh, Turner uh, Road area, the whole McDaniel Mill Road area. This is very important to those people flushing, washing, and right. using whatever uh, in terms of getting this system going through. So right. thank goodness for them. It's a lot of money because this stuff costs. So I'll leave it there. Absolutely. But thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Director. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I also put into perspective for that particular month was 1.91 million gallons that was pumped to DeKalb for treatment. And that was just from one little corner pocket of the community. Just just a certain right. corner pocket right. of the right. That's not even Rockdale County because we don't send all our exactly. stuff there. That's just a corner of the community yeah. right there. Absolutely. That's a lot that was, of gallons. That was July 1. Yes, ma'am, just for that month. All right. Good. Okay. Good education. Okay. Good yes. education. Next item, please. Item 464 is an expenditure request to the Cab County Revenue and License Administration through the Water Resources Department. This is for the sewage treatment for July 2022 in the amount of $89,982.90. Item 465 is an expenditure request to envelopes and forms incorporated, also known as Sure Bill, through the Tax Commissioner's Office. This is for the tax mailing for 37,500 mailings in the amount of $19,612.50 and this is submitted for ratification. Mm -hmm. Item 466 is a list of surplus equipment from the district attorney's office and from the general services department. Item 467 is a resolution for safe streets and roads grant program submitted through RDOT and this is submitted for ratification. Item 468 is the Rockto County Policy Amendment for the disposal of dead animals, decomposed animals, and roadkill on the county rights of way to amend Rockto County Policy 1998-3-1 as amended. What does that policy say? Whose turn it is to pick it up? <laughs> so. uh, what department that falls on the transportation, right? Depart our doctor. Well, it was. Rockdale Department of Transportation. Come on up, Director. Yes, sir. Come on up. Yes, sir. All right. And hang in there. <laughs> yeah, see how you moving. Just hang on in there. Tell us about tell us about this road kill and picking up these dead animals. So come on. Good evening, come on Chair. with it. We evening. ready. Good Good evening. Evening, Commissioner. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, historically, this uh the road kill, anything you would see would be done by our doctor. We had a, a CIT team that would take care of that. Mm -hmm. There was a transition. A community improvement uh, team. Community improvement team. There was a transition of that staff um, and all the equipment that was necessary for everything that they do. But the amendment was to change the policy from their old team, which was RDOT, to the new group, which was uh, code enforcement. So that's what that. So who is responsible? So that's under planning and, 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 and development. And the CIT team went to that, to, that, to that group. Okay, so who's picking up the road kill? So... The road kill, uh, that's that's our our community improvement team. Okay, that's why I need you to get yes. out. That's why you're standing there, because we want to find out who's responsible for picking <laughs> up the road kill. So All right, so the community improvement team that does correct. that. It Chief, is. tell me what you know about yeah, this. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. So um, for many years, uh, staff from the Rockdale Department of Transportation have had the responsibility of going out, responding to citizen concerns, and picking up dead animal carcasses either that are in the roadway or in the county right of way and essentially what transpires from that is they collect these carcasses and then we don't have anywhere within Rockdale County to dispose of them so then 
uh, in the spirit of transparency and showing where the funds go, RDOT used to have a line item in their budget that would be allocated for the disposal of those animals. And essentially they are transported into DeKalb County where they have an animal incinerator and that's where the animals are disposed. Mm -hmm. So essentially this policy transfers the responsibility from RDOT's responsibilities over to planning and development because the community improvement team now operates under planning and development. Chief, I really appreciate you and Director uh, Kelly giving that education. We're getting ready to enter into the uh, deer season, yes. uh, but not just limited to the deer. There's all kind of roadkill and caucuses that you'll see out and about in the road. When Ms. Jenkins calls the BOC office and she reports that an animal is out in front of her house, we need to be able to know which division to dispatch to pick it up. And I think it was important that you explain that we don't have an animal incinerator here to, to handle those caucuses. Now, sometimes y'all know that some of these animals are in the, dead in the middle of the road. They got, they got to go. We got to get them out of the road because they're obscuring traffic. We have to remove them. So having the folks on the community improvement team, and sometimes these things happen through the night and the early wee hours of the morning, and we have to be able to dispatch somebody to remove these caucuses or these dead animals, roadkill, whatever you want to call it, out of the roadway as to not to uh, cause a problem with traffic. Having this agreement, uh, again, to what you were saying, Commissioner, it explains to folks how this is done. But now I needed to know because I needed to be clear. I just knew that every time we called on, uh, I called you, you got, you got it removed. I didn't actually know which division within your department took care of it. Community Improvement, Improvement Team, Team, CIT. All right, thank you so much, Director. That's, that's a great point of clarity there. Absolutely. Absolutely. One more thing that you wanted uh, to add. And Mr. Sure. Chairman, this policy. You still on road kill? Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. We, we just, for the record, we just need to state that the, the actual effective date would be October 1st. Oh. Of the new yes. policy change. Oh, right in time yes. for, yes, for the yes. season. Yes, sir. Okay, <laughs> all right, unfortunately. Okay. All right, sewer I'm and sorry, animals. Okay. Oh. Uh, sewer and, <laughs> and animals. Okay. Dead animals. All right, so uh, <laughs> we're almost there, y'all. We can hang in there. Okay, item 469 is the list of alcoholic beverage licenses requests. Item 470 is the Rockdale County Employee Classification and Pay Plan Amendments. Item 471 is a memorandum of understanding between the City of Conyers and Rockdale County for the installation and use of public safety cameras. Chief, you want to talk about that one? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, this is an agreement with the City of Conyers Police Department uh, for the use of public safety cameras um, for citizens that may not be aware. The Police Department in the city uh, has been operating public safety cameras for many years and they are monitored by the, the 911 center within the city um, communication center. Um, they are uh, in the process of adding additional cameras and coverage area to Old Town and essentially this agreement allows them to um, attach and install uh, said cameras to county owned buildings. Outstanding. Outstanding. Big, big Brother's watching, and if you are doing something in the city limits that you ain't got no business doing, you subject to be caught on camera. So I, I like that, and if the bad guy is, is moving and shaking through the city limits, they can zoom in on his license or the picture of the vehicle, and, 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 and hopefully they can catch that Mr. joker. Mr. Chairman, if I could add also, um, this, this is no expense to Rockdale County. Uh, this is an expense that the city of this Conyers is an has agreement. covered completely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and also it provides enhanced security not only to the Old Town area, but also to our courthouse and government complex our campus. as well. Fair, very good. I like that. Very good. We're living in a different world now, Commissioner. Absolutely. Next item, please. Item 472 is with Bell South Telecommunications LLC doing business as AT&T Georgia through the General Services Department. This is for AT&T equipment for the new 911 dispatch center, the new primary site in Node B, in the amount of $316,241. This is SPLAS plus, plus funded plus $4,865 monthly. Single purchase with 60-month maintenance agreement on the equipment. 
That was a mouthful. Yes, it was. Okay. All right. All right. Well, Commissioner Washington, we went through the agenda review. I think we have uh, several good points of education and information there. That's Director good. Rulich, where that brings us back to public comment. To public comment. So Absolutely. Chief Cabe is going to bring you a couple of, of cards. Um, okay. If anybody else needs to fill one out. Okay. Please do so, and I'll read the disclaimer. Okay. As a reminder, public comment is limited to three minutes per speaker. Comments relative to any issues that are currently going through the public hearing process, matters that are in active litigation, political campaigning, or poli partisan politics will not be heard in this meeting. Speakers are to address the chairman, not each other, or the audience, and are expected to conduct themselves in an appropriate manner. The use of abusive or profane language shall not be allowed. No debate or argument between speakers and or members of the audience shall be permitted. Thank you, Director Rutledge. Uh, Ms. Corliss Turner, uh, our first speaker this evening. Come on up, Ms. Turner. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, I just want to make a comment that on um, during the military hearing, uh, I appreciate uh, uh, chair, uh, Chairman for uh, encouraging citizens to come out and be a part. On August 23rd, there was another uh, meeting, and Voices for Rockdale myself expressed that we were uh, trying to educate citizens and that we were going to be sending out letters or emails to the department heads. And your comment, and I have a clip, I'll send it to you in email, was that you will fully support us. So on the 27th, we sent an email to the planning and zoning. We sent one to uh, the assessors and the tax commissioner and to the code enforcement. They all were welcoming that and said that they would be glad to do the virtual meetings with us. Then on the 30th at 6 a.m. in the morning, I got an email from... Uh, Jamie Cave, the chief of staff, saying that the county was working on something and um, they're in the process, if we could wait, if we could hold off. Well, we worked on this since July 28th mm -hmm. at our meeting we had at, at the clubhouse, which I did inform you. And we waited till after the military hearing in order to move forward. So when we started moving forward, you welcomed it. You said that you fully support us. Now, from my understanding, Jamie works for you, right? So I should go about what you say, am I correct? Not his e email, is that correct? That's and correct. then Voices for Rockdale mm -hmm. is another vessel mm -hmm. to educate, to help work with the county. We have a following that we just had a virtual with the BOE and it was wonderful and, and the members you know, received it. So we, we're just another vessel. So my question to you is, are we welcome to have this? Because then we started getting emails from these other three departments that said that they were, would be honored to do it, that this email had also been sent to them. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to answer now, but we would, Voices for Rockdale, mm -hmm. would like to request a meeting with you personally, uh, Chairman Oz, so we can send you an email and you can give us some dates that we can meet with you. Is that fine? I've got good news for you tonight, okay. Ms. Turner, and I'm so glad that you, uh, and I'm talking now so y'all can stop the clock. So Ms. Turner got a few more seconds, 36 seconds left on it. But I've got some good news for you. You're absolutely correct. Uh, you and Voices of Rockdale have done a fantastic job of putting your collective minds together to bring about questions and concerns. And you guys have been Johnny on the spot in terms of being educated and informed, and you're taking that good information Thank back you. to the people who that you're able to influence. What I wanted to make sure, and this was my direction to the Chief of Staff, day-to-day -day operations, uh, our staff are already loaded with multiple things. So what we want to do in honoring and honoring your request is to make sure that we have some form of organizational management. In addition to that, between our legislative affairs director and our public relations department, we're putting together an information session that will inform all of the citizens about what's happening in each and every one of those departments. Now, who starts first, whether we start first or you all start first, uh, that um, may be something we can talk about when you guys come in to meet with me. So I welcome the opportunity. Let me just tell you how that works. Um, you can come see your chairman, 
get a hold of Ms. Lee, she's the executive assistant for the chairman, give her a call, coordinate y'all schedule with my schedule and we'll set you up a time where you can come in and then we can work through and map out a good plan that'll be beneficial and doesn't put a strain on staff, but it also gives the citizens the, the level of attention and information that they need. I think we can work in concert here because I really do appreciate you all coming out, particularly during the millage rate, but you've been staying on the scene, uh, just like Ms. Williams. You've been still here, you're making sure you gather this. If you notice all evening long, one of the things, and we're gonna be doing this yes, continuously sir. going forward, we're gonna stop, we're gonna make sure all of these directors that are staying here and that are coming to these meetings, they come prepared, knowing that at any given moment, the chairman may call them to the microphone to bring clarification, to give education, to give understanding. And sometimes it may not be whether they have an uh, item on the agenda or not. These acronyms and these terms. So yes, I encourage you to make sure you reach out to Mrs. Lee. And her number, if one of your team members want to write this number down, let me give it to you. I'm going to give it to you slow enough so you can copy it. Give her a call. She's the best. 770 624, wait a minute, no, wait a minute, I'm in such a habit of giving my own number out. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Ms. Jacket, that's my number. Hold on, let me give you Ms. Lee number. I've been giving that number out so long, I just got it brain in my head. Let me back up, I stand corrected. Commissioner, did you see that? Here it is, 770-278-7003. That's Ms. Andra Lee, she serves as the executive assistant to the office of the chairman, here's what she's gonna do. She's gonna look at our calendar and she's gonna coordinate my availability with y'all's availability to come in. And I, I encourage you to bring your team with you so everybody is getting the information all at one time. We have a, I don't call it, we changed the name back in 2017. They used to call it a conference room, but we don't call it that. We call it the solution room. So we'll welcome you into the solution room. We'll put our heads together. We'll figure out how we can make sure that local HOAs, local churches, local nonprofits who want to engage and be informed about how the county operates, that we can line up with those schedules and bring people out, staff, but we can respectfully coordinate with their schedules. Never intentions that we didn't want to do it. We just have to make sure we coordinate with their schedules and make sure that we do that because we have to manage people. And you, you know about managing people yes. and managing schedules. And particularly if you're talking about asking somebody to be uh, out after work at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock at an HOA. We can do that given the enough notice and advance time because we have to respect people's livelihoods. Our employees are mothers fathers and husbands and wives and uh, they have schedules and stuff too. They can be where we need them to be but we have to respectfully schedule them accordingly and coordinate and make sure we do that. So uh, give Miss Lee a call. Let's get on the calendar and let's get it worked out. Okay, I do okay, want to you say, got 36 more seconds. I Go do right want ahead. to say that, that those, those three departments did commit to doing it at 6 o'clock in the evening. They gave us a selection of dates and, and we chose the date so it was halted and um, so we'll speak more about this when we meet with you and you'll be getting an email or we'll speak to Miss, tell me her name again. Miss Lee, Lee, Ms. Lee. E L E E okay. Lee. Okay. And, and you're right, we did put a stop to that so that we can coordinate and collaborate together. That way you get more bang for your buck in terms of how we're doing it because we don't want to limit it to just the three departments. We want to make sure we do a complete Countywide oh, yes. education. That's right. To That's make what sure. we were doing. Oh. We're going to do. We started with those three, and then we got the email from from Kate, and I'm looking at what you said, and then I didn't even see you in the well, chat. Let, let this serve as good news tonight. Okay. All right. Okay. So we're going to work together. Okay. Give Miss Lee a call, and we'll make sure we get out there and we could be a part of your effort and your campaign to educate the citizens. Thank just, you so much. Just remember, we're another vessel. We, we need that vessel. We need as many vessels as we can. Okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Turner, and thank you for all that you do on behalf of the citizens of Rockdale County. Uh, Ms. Jacqueline Reed. Ms. Reed. Jacqueline Reed. Thank you, Ms. Reed, and thank you for coming out and, and investing in our meeting this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, that completes all of our uh, public comment. Oh, you've got Ms. Williams. We can't leave Ms. Williams out. She's been, she's been die hard all the way. I got it, Chief. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Come on up. Absolutely. Okay, so we can go home.
Um, so what I want to talk about is the county road, Avalon Parkway. Mm -hmm. And I know you guys weren't commissioners when this was constructed uh, maybe 20 years, 21 years ago. And I ago. want you to show the people who watching this week, they can hear that ago. lovely voice of yours. Okay. Yes, ma'am. 21 years ago. And so what's happening on Avalon Parkway, somewhere there was an arrangement that Avalon Parkway and, and the, the uh, grass and all of that on Avalon Parkway would be maintained by the community. However, for that area to be treated as common area, we get no uh, direct benefit from that, from that, from paying our dues and using our dues money to pay for that county road. So Avalon Parkway is used for the schools, it's used for Brentwood, it's used for Westchester Lake, but the homeowners, the 365 homeowners in, Av in Old Salem Township, are paying for the maintenance of that area mm. close to about fifty thousand dollars wow. a year okay. for the past 20 years mm. so we've been coming and trying to ask even when Odin was here and asking for assistance and so I just want to know how do we go about getting some relief for the homeowners in Old Salem Township because dues are going up because landscaping is going up and it's hard for us to maintain that. So if I understand you correctly, Ms. Wigan, I think the, the part of the dues that you've been ex, uh, collecting in your HOA goes to the maintenance of that common space that's out there that really you think is a, is a county road. Yeah, Avalon Parkway. Avalon Parkway. Here's a starting point. Uh, Director uh, Kelly is our, our dot director. The first thing, I don't believe in micromanaging. I think this is a good conversation. Uh, after this meeting is concluded, uh, you'll get with Director uh, Kelly. He is in charge of transportation in Rockdale County. I think there's an opportunity for him to come out and see exactly what you're talking about. He's relatively new to Rockdale, but he can go out to Avalon, see what you're talking about, do an assessment. Once he does an assessment, he's going to bring back a recommendation to this board. Uh, I found it a little unique that a HOA mm -hmm. is collecting dues, to, and you say this has been going on for 20-something years? Mm -hmm. Somebody should have said something long before now. But we said something to several times. <laughs> right, I got you. Well, let me just tell you, this administration has been part of what Betty Wright sings about, the cleanup woman. We've been a part of the cleanup crew for a long time. Mm -hmm. We're going to clean this up. We're going to start with Director <laughs> Kelly. And I think that's from, from, from um, organizational management and protocol. We'll wait until after the meeting. Director Kelly will communicate with you. We'll have his team to come out and do a, um, an assessment from a transportation standpoint. And, and if there's a way that we can make this happen, I think we need to do that. Avalon is a county road, no doubt about it. I appreciate Absolutely. that. Thank you so much. Does that include, I'm sorry. No. Go right ahead, Commissioner. Are you saying that um, the $50,000 includes landscaping and streetscaping and lights? What, what all does the, are you um, all responsible for? It's, it's <coughs> Excuse me. annual mowing, edging, uh, picking up trash. Uh, as we grow in Rockdale County, there are more people traveling up and down the road. They're dumping trash out on that street. Uh, and so in order to keep it clean, because there's a lot of people that walk through there, we've been just maintaining it. Okay, thank you. I think that we can certainly, uh, once you get with Director Kelly, he'll come back to us with a recommendation. I think we can move forward with that. Absolutely. Right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Thank you so much. Thank you, Commissioner. Now we're going to move into board comment. And uh, there's no other commissioner to start with other than you. So there it is, Commissioner Washington. Goodness. Well, we, it's been a minute. It seems like we, it's been a minute since we sat in the seat that I sat in the seat. So. Glad to be back. Um, first thing, we had our annual employee appreciation, and it was fabulous. Congratulations, talent management, for putting on what look, I got there at the tail end. Like KJ and I were running, trying to get on a ride. So he <laughs> got on maybe two rides, but he had a snow cone. So he was happy. <laughs> okay. So, um, but um, it was, it looked like a fabulous event. Um, very well planned. And uh, the fact that we got sponsors for it really, really it is in line with what we're trying to do 
you know, moving the, the county forward. So it was a great event. Thank you so much. And congratulations to C.G. Baker for being the Employee of the Year. Yes, let's so give let's C.G. Get... a round of applause. We got more, more highlight coming for C. Oh, C.G. Okay. Uh, his director is here, Director uh, Morgan is here, but we're going to do a, a, a bigger and a different little thing for CG okay. coming up here pretty soon, but thank you, Commissioner, absolutely. No problem. Um, the next thing is um, always uh, have small businesses in mind. So there's a couple of things um, getting ready to occur. The first thing is that State Representative Doreen Carter and I are co-hosting a, a, a small business forum and that would be October the 8th at JP Carr. Um, we have, once again, um, people from the Small Business Administration. We have um, other people, angel investors, other people. So it'll be from 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. on October the 8th at JP Carr. And the East Metro Business Network is one of the sponsors. So um, please come out and and find out as all the information that we have on that with that um, small business forum excited to work with um, our one of our state representatives and she's bringing state resources to Rockdale County the next thing is that we are, I'm still having my big small business um, forum or or um, education series our next installment is October the 19th it will be at costly mill from six o'clock until we get done. But this installment, we're talking about marketing, how to market your business, how to create a brand, how to um, establish your brand, uh, how to market your brand. So I'm really excited about um, our October the 19th series. And my last thing is, um, the members of Delta Sigma Theta, along with other members of the Divine Nine, we're holding a voter registration rally. It is in Lithonia, but this chapter services Rockdale County. We're asking, we're, it's nonpartisan. We're asking everybody to come and celebrate your right to vote. Um, it is sponsored by the Stone Mountain Lithonia alumni chapter of Delta Sigma Theta, but they have invited all other Greek organizations to be a part of it. Um, and we want the people to come out, like I said, celebrate your right to vote. It is nonpartisan. Um, we want for you all to come um, and and understand how precious that right to vote is. That's all I have for right now until you say something to dog my Well, uh, here's, here's what I'm going to say. You ready uh, to go? Director Rutledge, is there any need for executive yeah. session No, tonight? Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Uh, you got anything else to say before I say what we're about to say No, next? no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm good and ready to go. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you for being a part of this meeting tonight. We appreciate you embracing the new direction of educating and informing our citizens about the different directions that we're heading in and all of the functions of our county government and our various departments. This meeting is adjourned. Yeah.